Hi everyone and welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith and in this video we're going to learn the two-player game Skull Hollow, designed by Keith Mateka and published by Pencil First Games who helped sponsor this video. The fox and small folk of Skull Hollow have felt the rumblings of giant guardians rising from their slumber. These massive creatures first shape the lands and are likely to crush the fox homes beneath their huge feet unless they're stopped. Can a small band of fox and heroes defeat a giant hulking guardian? Only one way to find out. Join me at the table and let's learn how to play. To set up, place the double-sided Skull Cola map in the center of the table. Both sides are the same, except that one more clearly shows the borders of the spaces if you prefer. Then decide who will play as the guardian and have them sit on this side of the table with the hero player over here. And then by the board, place the power cubes and wound tokens. This tray doesn't come with the game, it's one that I have, and if you'd like to pick one up for yourself, you'll find links to it in the description below. Now the Guardian player picks which of the four Guardians they're going to play as, and for your first game, they recommend using Grack. So they should take this board and set it on their side of the table, beside this matching player mat. Also find the tuck box for the rest of Grack's components. This will include a token which you place on the zero space of his track here, and his figure, which you'll stand up on this layer space of the board. Other guardians will have their own unique setup instructions, so when using them, pay attention to those. The box for Grack also contains a deck, which is shuffled and put face down beside their playmat, with a number of cards drawn from it equal to Grack's hand size, which is indicated here on the mat. So, in this case, a total of five cards should be drawn. Once the hero player knows which guardian is being used, they can start setting up their play area by putting their fox and hero's mat by their side of the table and collecting their tuck box. This will contain a number of items, including four options for the fox hero that they can play as. They pick any one of them, but for your first game, the king of war is recommended, which they'll set by their play mat, and the other leaders can be returned to the box. No matter which leader they pick, they also collect the Sentinel card and set it nearby as well. And then they find the matching pieces for each based on the symbols shown in their top left-hand corners. And these are then both placed together on the keep space of the board. The remaining hero figures are also set nearby for use later. Then the hero's deck is taken from the tuck box, shuffled and placed face down, with that player drawing a number of cards equal to the hand size as shown on their player mat. So, five cards, just like Grack received. Each player has a listing of their actions and abilities here on their play mat, but these will be different for the different players. So they each also have a reference card that duplicates that information, which they can then give to their opponent, so their opponent can use that as an easy reference during the game. And that's the setup. In Skull Hollow, the Fox and Heroes will be facing a gigantic enemy, which they'll have to scale and attack in an effort to defeat it. Well, the giant guardian will need to defeat those pesky harassers, often by taking out their leader, but we'll talk about the specific win conditions a little bit later. The game is played over a series of turns, beginning with the fox and hero player, and then going back and forth until one of them have reached their win condition, ending the game in their victory. Now, a turn begins with the player's main phase. So let's go back to the table, and I'll show you how this works for the fox and player first. This symbol found on the fox and player mat indicates the number of actions that player can take on their turn. And one type of action is to play a card from their hand. And there are two main types of cards. A unit like this is one of them. This will picture a hero with its figure shown in the top left corner. And when one of these is played, add it face up beside your play mat and find the matching piece, which you'll then put into the keep or either of these two town spaces, so long as the chosen space doesn't currently contain the Guardian. Throughout the game, there is no limit to how many hero units can be in any one of these ground spaces of the map. And we'll see how these fox and pieces are used in just a moment. The other type of card the fox and might play are orders. Most will have multiple actions to choose from, separated by a line like this. When an order is played, the player may only pick one of the actions to perform, assigning it to one of their units. And not every unit can perform every type of action, but there are two that are universal actions. So let's look at those first, starting with move actions. These will show some combination of arrows that indicate the neighboring spaces you can move into with one of your figures. 
Neighboring spaces are any that share a side or even just a corner with the space you are currently in. So for this figure here, all of these spaces are neighboring it. If it had been here, then all of the spaces around the outside edge of the board neighbor this one. And the board is always viewed from the perspective of the player using the card. So a maneuver played like this would allow the fox and player to pick any one of their units and then move it one space, either left, right, up, or down, as the symbols here show. So maybe they would go over here. The other action that can always be played is to gain power, which is represented by this symbol. And to resolve it, you take the number of power cubes as shown within this symbol from the supply and then place them into this area of your play mat. And we'll see how these are used a little bit later. The next actions we'll talk about can only be used by a figure if its related card shows those action symbols in its top left-hand corner here. For example, this archer can be assigned the missile attack, but not the leap or melee action, which can be done by this figure. So keep those limitations in mind when you're playing, but for now, let's go over these different actions, starting with leap. This is represented by a boot symbol shown jumping into the air, and just so it's clear, anytime you want to perform leap or any other action that your character can, you still have to play a card from your hand that shows that action symbol, like this one. And when you perform leap, this gives a single hero unit three different options to pick from. If they are currently in the Guardian's ground space, that is, the space where the Guardian is located, then they may use leap to leap onto the lowest area of the Guardian, moving it from the space to the area of the Guardian's board that has a pictured leap arrow. The Guardian's board will be made up of a variety of areas known as locations, each with their own name and outlined areas for fox and figures. When entering a guardian location, the fox is put into an empty space there. If all of these spaces had been filled with other fox and figures, then the fox could not leap to that area. In other words, we would not be able to use a leap location to add this figure to the guardian. But the area was empty, so we'll put them here. Now, another way to use the leap action is to move a hero already on the guardian to another location that's connected by one of these dotted lines. So for example, from here to here. But again, there would have to be an empty space for the figure to move into. The final way to use leap is to move a hero who is anywhere on the guardian to the guardian's ground space. So when using the leap action, you have to pick just one of those options for one of your fox and heroes to perform. There's also a double leap card, and this lets you leap with a single hero twice or two different heroes once each. Just keep in mind, if you are going to use it on a single hero, then there'll need to be an empty space in each area it would move into or through. So in other words, this hero could not do a double leap because the first location it would need to enter is this one, and it's already full. Next, let's discuss this action, a melee attack. This allows a hero unit already on the Guardian to deal one wound to their location. This will put a green wound token on any empty space there. If there were no empty spots, then a melee attack would do nothing. Now, as we'll see later, each location of the Guardian provides it with an ability it can perform, in this case, the throw ability. But once all the wound spaces of that location are full, the related ability can no longer be used. Also, if all of the wound spaces on the entire Guardian's board have been filled in, then the Guardian is defeated and the hero player wins. Another way to assign wounds is using this missile attack action, which lets a hero deal a wound to any location on the Guardian. But heroes with this ability will have a special rule here on their card that explains where they must be located. For example, a hero that says it can fire must attack from a surrounding ground space, which is any space sharing a full edge or just a corner with the guardian space. A hero that hurls its attack must actually be in the guardian space to perform a missile attack action. And those are all the actions, but I should point out, as we just saw, heroes may have abilities printed on their cards, so keep those in mind as they may give you special advantages. 
We won't go over all of those abilities, as again, they're printed directly on the cards, but if you have any questions, they are explained in detail on these pages of the rulebook. Either way, after a card has been fully resolved, you then place it into a discard pile beside your deck. And in addition to playing a card, the Fox and Hero can use actions to prepare. For each action spent this way, they discard one card from their hand and then draw two from the deck. If they happen to have no cards in their hand, they can still use a prepare action to draw two new ones, even though they had none to discard. Also, if at any point during the game either player runs out of cards in their deck, when they would need to draw a new one, they reshuffle their discard pile into a new deck and then keep drawing as many cards as they would have been owed. The other thing the Fox and player can do on their turn is use power cubes, but they cannot use any that are currently in their pool. Later, we'll see how these are moved from the pool to a hero's card. Once there, each of these can be spent at any time during that player's turn to allow that figure to either move or perform one of its actions shown here without needing to play a card. They just return a cube to the supply and then perform the related action. And these power cube actions do not count against their action limit for the turn. For the Fox and Hero, this is normally three actions per turn. But by spending power cubes, they can perform additional actions. And those are the rules for the Fox and player's main phase. Once they have taken actions up to their limit, along with any number of power cube actions they wish to, it's time for their cleanup phase, which is divided into two steps, starting with allocating power. If there are any power cubes in their pool, they can now be moved to empty power cube spaces shown on the heroes that they have in play. Some, like the knight, won't have any of these spaces, so they cannot be given power cubes. Any cubes that cannot be assigned from the pool are then returned to the supply and lost. Next, the player refills their hand drawing until they've reached their hand limit, which in the case of the fox and heroes is five. Now, if they were already at or above their limit at the start of the cleanup phase, then they just draw a single card instead. After the hero player has finished taking their turn, it's the Guardian's turn, which is resolved in a very similar way. They now get to perform up to as many actions as their limit, which on Grax's board is two. Now this includes playing cards in their hand, or using the prepare action to discard a card and draw two, or even using power cubes in some cases, though some Guardians, like Grack, can't actually gain and spend power cubes while other Guardians can. Now, although performing actions works the same way for the Fox and Guardian player, the types of actions they have will be different. Each Guardian has its own actions it can perform based on its deck, and their effects are explained here on the Guardian's playmat. For example, this card lets the player use the Gaze ability, which, as explained here, deals one wound to any hero in a surrounding space sharing a full side with Grax space, while other effects, like Throw, will let Grack remove any hero from his board and then put it into any space of the game's board. Now, we're not going to go over each of these individual abilities as they're all explained right here on the playmat itself, but if you need further information, you can also find it on that Guardian's page in the rulebook. Just remember, as mentioned, if an area of Grack's board has been filled with wounds, that related ability can no longer be used. Also note, each Guardian has a special ability that's shown here. For example, if Grack has nine or more wounds at the beginning of its turn, the Guardian player can perform one additional action. Every Guardian also has its own unique win condition. Grack can win by eliminating eight hero units, and for each hero that is defeated, you move this token one space to the right to keep track of how close Grack is to winning. To defeat heroes, the Guardian must perform actions like Gaze that cause wounds to a targeted hero. And for each wound, a red marker is added to an empty wound space on that hero's card. And once all of those spaces have been filled in, the hero is eliminated. Return its figure to the supply, along with any tokens on its card, and then put that card into the Fox and Player's discard pile, where it may be shuffled into the deck and used again later. The other way any Guardian can win the game is by eliminating the hero's leader, in this case, the King of War. The leader, however, has a special form of protection. Any two or more hero figures in the same space of the board, or location of the Guardian's board, are said to be banded together, 
and if the leader is ever banded, it cannot be wounded or affected by a guardian's action. For example, if using the throw effect, the guardian couldn't remove the leader because it's banded to this figure. Now that said, the other figures in the banded group can still be wounded or targeted by effects. So the guardian could throw this figure and then with a second action, throw the leader because it isn't banded anymore. Once the guardian has taken all the actions they can or wish to, then the other player goes and back and forth it will continue like this until either the hero wins by eliminating the guardian, filling all of its wound spaces, or the guardian wins by eliminating the hero leader or by fulfilling their unique win condition as shown on their player mat. The game also comes with these ancient relic tokens, which you can give to a less experienced player to help balance things out. They can spend each one at any point during a turn, removing it from the game to get an additional action for each one spent. And don't forget there are different leaders for the hero player to choose from and different guardians to go up against, allowing for different combinations when you play. But otherwise, that's everything you need to know to play Skull Hollow. If you have any questions about anything you saw here, feel free to put them in the comments below, and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. You'll also find forums for discussion, pictures, other videos, and lots more over on the games page at BoardGameGeek, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like, subscribing, and clicking that little bell icon so you get a notification anytime we post a new video. But until next time, thanks for watching.